Okay? Now, so everyone see what's going on with these ten Nevarims according to the Catholic versus what the Father says do. The very don't add or take away is gone. And they and their belief, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so now let's talk about what happened. I'm gonna read some stuff to you and you all can just relax and hear what I'm about to say. Um, if if uh, it hurts a little bit, uh, email me after Shabbat. All right. It says, in the year 321, the Emperor Constantine, who was not yet declared Christian, but was still hovering between paganism and Christianity, issued a decree making Sunday a compulsory day of rest. But the fact that he speaks of Sunday as the vulnerable day of the sun, the pagan sun worship, hence the name. So, and then what they said from there, you have, what they're talking about is, Okay, everyone can see that, right? Mm -hmm. So Sunday was understood as sun's day, meaning the sun that's in the sky. Okay, everyone's good so far. All right. So it says, um, vulnerable sun, the pagan was sun worship. Okay, so it says, show that he was thinking of it as a traditional sun festival or a sun feast. At the same time that he thought of the Christian's holy day, Sunday, came to observance throughout Europe as it's still observed by the Roman Catholics, namely as a day of which, like Christmas, now I'm going to pause on Christmas, I'm going to read just a little something on Christmas, not long, okay? When we, when we talk about Christmas another day, we'll go into a little bit deeper than this, okay? According to uh, Ramsey McMullen, uh, the Syriac Bishop Jacob Bar Sibley wrote in the 12th century, It was a custom of the pagans to celebrate on the same 25th of December, the birth of the sun, at which they kindled lights in token of the festivities. In these similitudes, the Christians also took part. Accordingly, when the doctor of the church perceived that the Christians had had a leaning to this festival, they took counsel and resolved that the true nativity should be solemnized on that day. And I got a citation where you can go look this up. So what winds up happening is when they were doing this sun worship and on December 25th, they were having this festival for the sun. They said the Christians said, hey, this is nice. They started doing a little bit of it, and they decided to make that day the Messiah's birthday. Okay? All right, so let's get back to it. That's what I said, just a little bit on Christmas. All right, <clears throat> so let's get back. So it says, uh, what is it, still observed by the Roman Catholics, namely as they on which, like Christmas, people went to church in the morning and paganism uh, 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 and gave themselves uh, over to rest or to holidays making and doing sports. Now, we'll talk about sports a whole nother day. Okay? Uh, Arthur Wigwell, The Paganism of Christianity, 1928, page 236 through 237. Also, Wigwell, and he lived 1880 through 1934, was a British historian, e Egyptologist, the Inspector General of Antiquities for the Egyptian government. Okay? So these are the ones that went out and did some research. Emperor Constantine's legislation in 321, which the vulnerable day of the sun was to be kept as a day of rest. Remember, Constantine was worshiping Solventicus. Let me see. Does anyone know what that means, Solventicus? It's Latin. Sol means sun. Is it the day of the invincible sun? Right. It's, uh, uh, it's Sol, the S-O-L, is their way of saying Solstice. sun. Mm -hmm. And Vindicus means conquering. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they, they, they're the ones that consider themselves conquering the sun. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and the first heard of this, and I put this on the notes, so uh, when we upload it, you'll see all this stuff. So I can skip a little bit of that. All right, so it says, The church soon follows suit in 336 uh, AD, some give it 364, at the Council of mm -hmm. Lacedaemon. 
Canon 29, the Christians were commanded to observe the sun, the Sunday as well. Bishop Isubius, everyone's familiar with who Isubius is, that's a historian like uh, Josephus and things like that. Mm -hmm. He's like another historian. He says, who worked with Constantine, admit to the church decision to change from Shabbat to Sunday. Okay, everyone's good so far. Mm -hmm. Sunday closing laws. What's another way of saying that? Blue law. Blue law. All right. Has a long history in the United States. Blue law dates back to the, col the colon col colonial times across the ocean, restricting on Sunday activities. Go back to the days of Roman Emperor under the Emperor of Constantine. A discussion of Sunday closing of blue law isn't just history because the policies debate over the Sunday closing. In other words, when did he want it to close? Uh, periodically, the springing up first in one community, then in another, followed by yet another. The first blue law in America colonies was enacted in Virginia in 1617. Okay? One day of the week was named after soul, which we say was the sun, but there was no observance any of these days in the ways that the Jews observed Saturday or the Christian Sunday. At this point, it's been labeled Christian Sunday. Okay? Um, it says, the first Sunday closing law was enacted by Constantine in 321 AD, and there uh, refers to the day of the sun, a form of the basis of subsequent Christianity's legislation in this area. And I have a whole source where you can find that. So you all can get that when I upload it. The Bible says, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. The Catholic Church says, no, by my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day. And command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverence, obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. Mm. Father Enright, American Sentinel, June 1893. Okay? Reason and common sense demands the acceptance of one or the other of these alternatives. Either Protestants and the keeping of the Holy Saturday, or Catholics and the keeping of the Holy Sunday comprises, it's, it's compromise is impossible. The Catholic Mirror, December 23, 1893. The Catholic Church took the pagan Sunday and made it the Christian Sunday, and thus the pagan Sunday, dedicated to Baal or Baal, became the Christian's Sunday sacred to Jesus. Catholic World, March 1894, page 8, 809. Sunday is a Catholic institution and it claims to, uh, it claims to observe, observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. From the beginning to the end of the scriptures, there is not a single passage which warrants the transfer of weekly public worship from the last day of the week to the first. Catholic Press, Sydney, August 25th, 1900. Sunday is our mark, our authority. The church is above the Bible. Mm. And this transference of the Sabbath observed is proof of this fact. Catholic records September 1st, 1923. World News, Sunday Times, page 5 through 7, 1998, Pope launches crusade to save Sunday. Okay, so I'm going to stop there with, with all of these, right? But tell me what you get so far, starting with 321 A.D. Constantine changed. Okay, Constantine changed. He said he took the authority mm -hmm. to change the most high law and said otherwise in, in English he, was, he thought he was God. He could do it what he wanted to do. So, okay. You know, uh, so once he established that, they kept... You know, from the Romans kept, you know, just what after generations keep teaching the same thing. Okay, so it started going down to generations. Right. Anyone else? Does anyone see that the Catholic decided to tell you just how powerful they are? Mm -hmm. I am willing to tell you that I have the authority to change the Bible. 
That's why they took on the name Father. Exactly. Because